Chapter 30, Our Responsibility to the Blind. Treat the blind with compassion. The Lord desires those connected with the medical missionary work to be true missionaries. In word and action they are to be Christ-like. They are not to be merciful only when they feel an impulse to show mercy, nor are they to act selfishly towards others who are the most deserving of medical missionary work. The blind, for instance, are to be treated with compassion. Let medical missionaries reflect concerning their actions toward the blind, that they may learn whether, as true missionaries for God, they could not have done for this unfortunate class of people many things that they have left undone. From what has been presented to me, I know that many, many cases have not received the encouragement that Christ would have given them were he in the place of our medical missionaries. The Lord, he is God. He notices these instances of neglect. Every such wrong action is a misrepresentation of his mercy, loving kindness, and benevolence. I am instructed to say, watch carefully, prayerfully, conscientiously, lest the mind become so engrossed with many important business transactions that true godliness is overlooked and love is quenched from the soul, notwithstanding the great and pitiful need of our being, God's helping hand to the blind and to all others who are unfortunate. The most friendless demand the most attention. Use your time and strength in learning to be fervent in spirit, to deal justly and to love mercy, serving the Lord. Remember that Christ says, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Manuscript 109, 1902. While God is a friend to the blind and the unfortunate, he does not excuse their sins. He requires them to overcome and to perfect Christian character in the name of Jesus, who overcame in their behalf. But Jesus pities our weaknesses, and he is ready to give strength to bear up in trial and to resist the temptations of Satan, as if he will cast our, we will cast our burden upon him. Angels guard the blind. Angels are sent to minister to the children of God who are physically blind. Angels guard their steps and save them from a thousand dangers which, unknown to them, beset their paths. But his spirit will not attend them unless they cherish a spirit of kindness and seek earnestly to have control over their natures and to bring their passions and every power into submission to God. They must cultivate a spirit of love and control their words and actions. I was shown that God requires his people to be far more pitiful and considerate of the unfortunate than they are. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Here genuine religion is defined. God requires that the same consideration which should be given to the widow and fatherless be given to the blind and to those suffering under the affliction of other physical infirmities. Disinterested benevolence is very rare in this world, age of the world. Testimonies, Volume 3, page 516. Guardians of the Unfortunate If there are those in the church who would cause the blind to stumble, they should be brought to justice, for God has made us guardians of the blind, the afflicted, the widows, and the fatherless. The stumbling block referred to in the Word of God does not mean a block of wood placed before the feet of the blind to cause him to stumble, but it means much more than this. It means any course that may be pursued to injure, injure the influence of their blind brother, to work against his interest, or to hinder his prosperity. A brother who is blind and poor and diseased, and who is making every exertion to help himself that he may not be dependent, should be encouraged by his brethren in every way possible. But those who profess to be his brethren, who have the use of all their faculties, who are not dependent, but who so far forget their duty to the blind as to perplex and distress and hedge up his way, are doing a work which will require repentance and restoration before God will accept their prayers. And the Church of God, who have permitted these unfortunate brethren to be wronged, 
will be guilty of sin until they do all in their power to have the wrong righted. Testimonies, Volume 3, pages 519 and 520. The Viewpoint of Mercy I wish that we might all see as God sees. I wish all could realize how God looks upon those men who profess to be followers of Christ, who have the blessing of sight and the advantage of means in their favor, and who yet envy the little prosperity enjoyed by a poor blind man, and would benefit themselves, increase their stock of means at the disadvantage of their afflicted brethren. This is regarded of God as the most criminal selfishness and robbery, and is an aggravating sin which he will surely punish, God never forgets. He does not look upon these things with human eyes, with a cold, unfeeling human judgment. He views things not from the whirling standpoint, but from the standpoint of mercy, pity, and infinite love. Testimonies, pages 514 and 515. Blind often mistreated. With those who dare to deal without mercy, God will deal as they have dealt with those who besought them for aid. I have been instructed that the blind have often been dealt with in a merciless way. True sympathy between man and his fellow man is to be the sign distinguishing those who love and fear God from those who are unmindful of his law. Manuscript 117, 1903 Fulfill your responsibility to the unfortunate. It is strange that professed Christian men should disregard the plain, positive teachings of the Word of God and feel no compunctions of conscience. God places upon them the responsibility of caring for the unfortunate, the blind, the lame, the widow, and the fatherless. But many make no effort to regard it. In order to save such, God frequently brings them under the rod of affliction and places them in positions similar to those occupied by the persons who were in need of their help and sympathy, but did not receive it at their hands. Testimonies, Volume 3, page 517.